Okay, let's do this. Give you some perspective on how large that is. It's not the first time I've heard that. Now the reason I even bothered lifting that up onto the table is to show you guys a little bit of perspective because I'm 5 foot 10, 170 pounds and here I'm lifting up this machine. You can see it's much larger. Over the years we've done such a great job of making small RCs look large. Or we all have these mobile phones and tablets and things that we watch our videos on and we can never quite grasp the size. This is a full-size drill, if that's any kind of help at all. Here's an extra large size of WD-40. That's the extra large can. That kind of gives you a small idea. Now what are my thoughts on the Primal RC? If you guys have watched uh, the first three videos I did of unboxing and then bashing this machine around, let me know in the comments section down below because I've read through a lot of the comments and I've had a quite a bit of experience with the machine now and I want to address some of the things I've heard or I read. Ugh, look at that massive, huge CNC straight axle. Now one of the things I'd like to say is that I haven't had any of my steering hubs, the C hubs, the spindles or anything back off and get loose. All of this has been Loctited. Oh, look at this. Is that the first one? Yes. Okay, look at this. I do have one right here. And this is why I wanted to go over the machine today. It's because I've had it shake and rattle and roll. I've jumped it at least a hundred times. And I've had about three tanks, three full tanks of fuel through this truck. You can see I was mostly on dirt, gravel, that kind of thing. No wear on the tires. The only thing I could see that gets worn a little bit is the lettering starts to peel in some areas. You can see it over here. You know, these are constantly flexing. This is actually a part of the suspension system. They're nice tires. Of course, they're, they're firm on the outside, but you can see they have some cushion, just like a full-size monster truck would, right? It uses quite a bit of um, flexibility to soak up the jumps. And of course, so does the monster suspension here. Sounds like I'm leaking, but I'm not. No, no leakage at all. <laughs> That's a good thing at any age. <laughs> Here, look at this. Sitting right beside it. It's enormous. Full size. Are you kidding me? It's like that wide, at least. Let me see. Nope, wider. That wide. <laughs> Are you kidding? You just can't quite grasp what Primal RC has done here until you're in the room with one of these vehicles. So yes, clearly I am obsessed with the monstrosity that this is, but moving past that, what do I think about the rest of it? Look at one, two, These. this is bolted a third piece right here. So this is a separate red piece. I'm still learning about this machine as well. I basically unboxed it and then took it out and had a great time with it, jumping it and the whole deal. Everyone was talking about the engine, saying, and they're still commenting to this day on the first, um, first unboxing video and test, how slow the engine is. Well, two things I'd like to say here. First, after all these years of watching RC Adventures, some of you understand that when you put gas and oil into an engine in the first time, it takes a few tanks to get it to seat properly and to break in to get your full speed. Second, you have to tune the engine to make it run even better over time. This is something that you can't do out of the box and you can't do on your second run even because it takes time to seat the piston properly. Ugh. 
everybody was telling me that I needed to tune the carburetor right out of the gate uh, to get this puppy to go a little bit faster. Now again, huge rotating mass on the ends of these axles. Huge. To get these moving, let's actually do a size comparison here. Uh, let's see, here is an old Vecta 5 wheel. Look at this. <laughs> it doesn't even compare proper Traxxas X-Max paddle tire. This is what we're talking about. So the 49cc engine, I agree, is slightly underpowered for power users. But for people that are just buying this out of the gate that have never bought an RC before, and it's not like you need a license to purchase things like this, anybody can buy them. You can go out right now and get one of these shipped to your house. Now the thing is, is if you don't know how to drive it, a vehicle of this weight can take out a small child, can take out an animal, can definitely do property damage if not used right. Now in an area like mine at a racetrack or out on a farm or somewhere where you've got a place to open it up and let her go, definitely modified engine. You guys want to go out and race, you guys have a lot of fun and do that, you want to crush cars that you make, whatever, do that. But also, just as, like a, as, a, as a warning to people that are out there that aren't familiar with how large this machine is, this can do damage in the wrong hands. So, Primal RC, from what I understand, they installed this engine, number one, to keep costs down, number two, to keep liability down. Because people that don't have practice with RCs and just go out and smash and bash could end up hurting themselves or others. So we do have uh, this stock engine in here. It does have a uh, carburetor on it. The carburetor only has a high speed needle. Now let me flip this on its side here. Guys, that there is the primer bulb. See that? Basically on the other side of that is the idle screw and the high speed adjustment. One thing that you guys may not know about this, you're all saying that it needs a two-speed transmission. I would agree with that. It could use a two-speed transmission. But look at all this. CNC'd has a reverse gear in it. <laughs> this actually can go in reverse. It's like one of the first ugh, big gas-powered monster trucks that have a reverse gear in it. That's pretty phenomenal. Here's something that I was having to figure out and I was struggling with. I couldn't figure out when I was jumping this machine, jump after jump after jump after jump, finally I was actually having an alignment issue. And I couldn't get it to go straight and I couldn't figure out what was going on because I'd take it off and adjust, but it was actually these four screws right here. These four screws are part of the horn and you can see that it's been slipping back and forth a little bit there, not a big deal, I was doing it on both of them. And I had to tighten it up so that when I came back to center with the servos, it would pull the wheels back to center. Now with these giant tires on here, I am surprised to see that two uh, fifth scale servos would actually move these. Um, it will actually move the tires as it sits still. Now of course, that's not the best thing for your RC. With a machine like this of weight, you know, you want to make sure it's rolling and you've got that mass rolling before you start turning back and forth because it makes it easier on the machines here. Less power overall. Now all that power goes right back to a battery I've got back here. This is a two cell LiPo battery. You can see my disc brakes, one on the back. It's right on the drive shaft. Like it literally, those calipers right there squeeze the brake on this massive drive shaft. Like the size of my finger is not the same size. It's close, but it's not. The drive shaft is larger. Now, what did I break? Well, we know I broke a little bit on the cage back here, and I broke one body post here. Body posts here and here on the side are fine. If you go right around to the other side, by the on-off switch, I broke one side body mount. 
Now that's a bummer. Not a big deal though. Plastic. A nut came off of here. People were asking me if I didn't use enough thread lock, but in fact, it's a lock nut, so you don't use you don't use thread lock on there. Is it a lock nut though? I wonder. I think it is. What a machine. What an incredible Goliath. This is the throttle and brake servo. This here actually ended up, this little turnbuckle right here, ended up vibrating loose and coming out, which made this all very loose and it all started to vibrate around and I actually ended up almost losing the servo altogether. Look, just one screw left. So Loctite these guys, big time. I should have known that. I thought I did Loctite it, but obviously not because it had a chance to shake loose. The front disc caliper and caliper I should say. Wonderful. An area that I struggled with with this machine was these pins back here for the drive shaft. They go all the way through. Lots of red Loctite is what I ended up having to use and leaving it for 24 hours to set. So I heated all this up. The pin went in with a red Loctite and um, I made sure to leave it for 24 hours, both front and back. And if you don't, what will happen is eventually the heat and everything will heat up and that pin will drop and you'll lose your drive shaft out the back. And you'll realize you only have two wheel drive. That happened on several occasions. I had a hard time getting those pins to stick, but finally once I did, they seem to be in for good now. Now if I want to get them out, not a big deal. I just heat it up with the blowtorch and uh, melt that Loctite. Take it out. Now a lot of people will say, and I've read in the comments section, well if a vehicle is going to be close to 3000 US, that it should come with at least an engine that powers it properly. Now I think that's an, a, a point of discussion. You guys can debate it in the comments section down below. For me personally, I haven't run into a ready to run vehicle, RC vehicle, that wasn't upgradable. In fact, that's why I enjoy the hobby so much is because there's so many different things you can do uh, with ready to runs. This doesn't come in a kit yet, you know, I don't know if they're ever going to do a kit, but for a ready to run, this engine online is like 140 bucks. This is a, like a, an inexpensive engine. So if you have a, like a an, uh, different size engine you want to put in there, I think you can still do that. I wouldn't see why you can't. And if you want to swap it out for a, a higher sized engine like an 80 or 100, they still come at basically the same size and they're only like 200 bucks online. So if anything, what you're paying for is all the design and CNC and look at these links on the bottom guys. Like the links are, that's my finger there. Like overall, I see value here. I know a lot of people don't. A lot of people will be like, ah, 28, like why are you selling this product with us? I'm not, I just don't really show products on the show that suck. <laughs> to be straightforward. I never really have. <laughs> so I want to take this off here. I want to look at the chain and have a look. Well here I'm talking about great amounts of Loctite and even with heat I'm not able to get this screw undone without stripping it out a little bit. The bottom one no problem came out so I'm just going to kind of move this. Now an old trick for me would be to remove these other screws that are all around it and try to slide this plate back and forth. Let me see here. I know I'm not sure if this plate is inset though, so if it was kind of like in there a little bit, it wouldn't slide back and forth. Sparks. Yeah, baby. And done. Now, is it inset? Oh, yeah, it is inset a little bit. Good call on that. See what I mean? It's got an inside lip quite a bit. Wow, nice amounts of grease in there, too, already. Except it's all over the side, all over the side instead of on my chain. So, I'm going to want to take care of that today. Look at this. You know what I love about this chain setup? It's a dual chain. Not just one, there's two. 
That is absolutely fantastic. I'll get you guys in here so you can see it. Look at that, two sprockets and two chains, not just a single chain. That's the right way to do it. I am super stoked. So this is direct off the engine right here. So this is the crank straight down to the transmission. It's beautiful. Still rocking the Cow RC Utter Butter. <laughs> Super waterproof grease. Just two finger it right there. Yeah, don't worry, you won't feel a thing. Right on the inside of the chain. And just getting in there, being dirty with it. Shoving it into all the nooks and crannies. Gonna roll it back and forth. Oh yeah, nice and sticky. That's what I like to see. Now, am I upset that this screw was Loctited too tight? Not really. I've got more time to care about other things because it's just a screw and it's easily replaced. Done. There we go. So it came with the breaker bar. Uh, either side you can use it and of course the right socket. So I wanted to have a look at this, see you know how far the actual shakeage goes. And really I think it just comes straight down to this part right here. Just a screw is a little bit loose. Right one? Nope, we need a bigger size, of course. And just add a dab of Loctite to it, thread locker if you guys know it is that instead. And then that way I'll know that it's in there with some fresh stuff on it. First thing I'll want to do though is inspect that thread and clean it out like with a wire brush or even possibly if you uh, have, if you know like you're all adults and you have a blowtorch in your shop, go and bust that out. And re-tighten it up. No shake at all, solid. Might as well see what the other ones are like. Super tight. And how's that steering? Saver is fine, good. I am shocked at how well this truck has held together at the abuse that I've given it. I truly am. I'm looking forward to a long winter of bashing with it, but I am yearning for a faster engine. Let's take a moment here. You can see I'm actually just zoomed in right to the middle of the axle. Let's look at this axle housing. Try to get the focus to come back. There we go. Look at the piece, pieces of axle housing that make it come together. Like, this section right here bolts on to this section right here, which is the center and same to the other side. This is like, it's hard to explain the, the size of this, you know, like bloody hammer just doesn't even, it's the same size. That kind of gives you a good idea how big that axle is. I love it. Well, I gotta hand it to Primal RC. Congratulations on making a behemoth RC, making it come to market for everybody to have the opportunity to own one themselves. It's, it's a design, I can tell, is out of pure passion. It reminds me of the old Claude Buster, except no motor on axle, an actual, uh, you know, gas devouring machine. And people say it doesn't have a lot of torque, but I'm gonna tell you right now, to get these giant tires even moving as fast as it does to get it out of the gate, I'm still a defender of the platform just the way it is, and unfortunately for the cost the way it is. And I don't even have a stake in the company. I don't have a stake in any company. But I gotta say that for these guys to go out there and to do this, I shine it and I'm gonna hold it up to the light because innovation like this is what has made our hobby so amazing. And if you're on your TV right now, or if you're on uh, uh, something where you can't comment or like button, hit the like button, I want you to go right now. I want you to leave a comment and to say what you think of the Primal RC Raminator. Smash that like button right now. Show that the RC community comes together worldwide to hold manufacturers in on the spotlight that deserve to be there because wow, what a machine. Guys, thanks a lot. I appreciate you coming by to check out the videos and RC adventures. We'll see you in the next episode. And as always, get outside and enjoy the hobby of RC. You know I always do. Bye-bye.